Hey everybody, let's talk about how to become a naval aerospace physiologist. And I should know, because I am one. So every few months, I get a call from usually an aspiring graduate student, somebody who's about to finish a PhD or somebody who's just finished and they're looking for a job and they're not looking in academia, they want to do something different and they see this idea of being an aerospace physiologist. And so they want to know what's going into it, how did I come to be there, how could they do the same if it's right for them. The way that I got here was a bit roundabout. I was actually working on a PhD and I went looking for funding and I went to the military because I was already working on a Department of Defense grant. That's how I was getting my research done at the Columbia Medical Center. And I went looking to the Navy thinking maybe the Navy could fund my research. And through that, I started to learn about programs where the Navy hired people who could do research. So I thought, okay, the Navy can fund my research while I'm in school, and then I can work for the Navy after as sort of a payback idea that I would pay that back. But that didn't end up panning out. I actually ended up learning about the job I have now to be an aerospace physiologist. And that looked appealing. So I kept going with that. I had a series of interviews where I was interviewed in the Washington DC area. I went from New York to Washington DC to do interviews. I went down to Pensacola, Florida, which is a big hub for aviation and aerospace physiology in the Navy. I was interviewed there by many, many people, presented myself in front of a, a boardroom full of 20 folks in uniform when I was a civilian in a suit and did all of that and uh, got recommendations, background checks, all of these things went into it. And I think a few things really made me stand out among the applicants. There were a few things that helped me to get the job. Number one is that I had a general inclination towards the military. I'd done things like the Boy Scouts, fraternities, stuff like that. I was, I was comfortable in the kinds of environments that are similar to a military environment already. I had things in order. I was, I was an Eagle Scout, which is often a, a predictor for military and things like that, or astronauts. So I had those kind of things going for me. Number two was that I had the education background to be an aerospace physiologist. Generally, it requires a, a graduate level of training in some sort of physiology or biology type field. Something like that will usually be the prerequisite education. It can vary if you have experience as a military pilot. That kind of thing can help you along the way as well. So there are some differences. Sometimes some people just need the right prerequisite courses and their military experience as a military pilot to come together to make them qualified to be an aerospace physiologist. And the third thing that helped me to stand out was that I had the right confluence of things to be very comfortable in a survival environment, in this world of water survival, which is a good portion of what I do. I was very comfortable in the water. I had experience teaching group fitness classes in the water, experience as a lifeguard. And just as a kid, I loved to swim even when I was a long distance runner, very competitive, when I would get injured, I would just go swim instead. I could do water running for long periods of time. I was very comfortable with that. Or if I hurt, say, my hip and couldn't even do water running, then I would get in the pool and I would swim with just my arms without kicking. I loved to be in the water. So there was a great deal of comfort around the water survival component of my work, as well as the general stuff of being a military officer and the scientist, physiologist stuff that goes into it. So those three things all came together for me in that process. All in all, it probably took 18 months to complete the whole recruitment process and get through that. And then when I was in the Navy, there was still more training before I could have my wings and be officially an aerospace physiologist. So I joined, then I went to six weeks of training in Newport, Rhode Island, where there I learned things like military customs, how to wear the uniform, did the getting up early, working out, making the bed so you can have it, all the hospital corners tight, all that kind of stuff. I went to Pensacola, Florida for nine months for training to be an instructor, to learn to fly, to learn physiology the Navy way and the things that are relevant to the aviators as well. Learn to fly a helicopter, all that kind of stuff. And then all of that came together to be all the qualifications, to get the wings, to be an aerospace physiologist. If you're looking at this, it's a six-year commitment. Don't believe what you see on the websites that say it's a three-year commitment. It is a six-year commitment because after you get your wings, then you have another commitment on top of that where you become an instructor. And then after that, you have a three-year commitment. 
So all in all, it's the three years of the training and then being an instructor and then another three years. And that's how you become an aerospace physiologist. I'll do another video later, maybe in about a week on what I do, what goes into being an aerospace physiologist. So if you want to catch that, be sure to subscribe. I'll catch you next time.